It was supposed to tackle tuberculosis in cattle by killing badgers humanely and in sufficient numbers to make the cull effective. On Monday, this program revealed the number of badgers killed in last year's pilot culls fell very far short of the target. Now Channel 4 News has been given exclusive access to post-mortems on badgers allegedly shot in the cull. Critics say their evidence raises questions about the humanity or the humaneness of the policy. Our science editor Tom Clark reports from Somerset and a warning there are images from the outset which some viewers may find upsetting. These may be the only images we will ever see of the badgers targeted by the government's culling policy. These pictures are from post-mortem reports released exclusively to Channel 4 News of two badgers allegedly shot by marksmen in the Somerset cull. Though they may be distressing to some viewers, they are important. By the government's own definition, the success of the cull hinges on whether shooting of badgers by marksmen is humane and effective. This was the badger that post-mortem shows us quite clearly that it did suffer. The wildlife charity which commissioned the post-mortems argues they show the policy is neither humane nor effective. It was shot directly into the spine between the shoulders and um, it, it meant that therefore it did have a period of time where it could run before it dropped. Yeah. And I know they measure humaneness by five minutes mm. and the post-mortem quite clearly shows that this animal did suffer. This is where we actually have a lot of the badgers. This rescue centre regularly receives dead and injured badgers, often hit by cars, sometimes shot illegally. But in this case, they believe, killed by trained shooters as part of the badger cull. There's a couple of guys in here, um, but they're in a box. We we'll probably need to just go inside and see them. As anyone who works with badgers will tell you, these animals are some of our toughest native mammals. They've evolved very thick skulls and stout bodies. And that means, even with a high-powered rifle, they can be quite hard to kill. It's why, from the start of these pilot culls, there were very strict rules about keeping the shooting humane. Cull marksmen are required to shoot badgers from the side, into the heart and lung area. The post-mortem of Badger 102 shows that's just what happened, an independent veterinary pathologist concluding its death was instantaneous. But Badger 200 was shot in the spine and fled. A small sample, but evidence, according to some experts, that shooting won't work. If you can't trust people that are professionals, how can you possibly pass this on to farmers who are going to be either doing this late at night after a full day's work or inviting other people to come and do it? And I have to repeat that I used to be a dairy farmer and if I thought that killing badgers would stop this disease in the countryside, I honestly would back it. As we found in the cull areas last year, shooting happens in the dark over a huge area. Today, DEFRA told Channel 4 News it had no information on Badger 200 and therefore wouldn't comment, but that Badger 102 was found in an area where shooting wasn't happening. That, that bit would but according to the man who retrieved the body, officials went to unusual lengths to get the badger back, including a visit from a police superintendent. He said that the um, likelihood would be that I'd be charged and, and arrested if I didn't release the badger. And I said, well, you tell me what you're going to charge me with and I'll make a decision. And they didn't come back. I mean, they talked about all sorts of nefarious acts like the animal byproducts regulations and government samples and goodness knows what else. And fortunately, I know a little bit about the law and I knew that they didn't really have anything to pin on me. If badgers are suffering in the cull, that must be viewed in context of the suffering TB causes cattle. Just ask Somerset farmer James Small. His closed herd has been infected twice in the last four years. Why do you maintain a badger cull is so important? TB is prevalent in the wildlife and in cattle. We've got measures in place to try to control the spread of that disease in the cattle, but they're constantly being reinfected by coming into contact with potential sources in the wildlife, which is why we need to address it in the wildlife. At the moment, we're simply not. An independent report into the effectiveness and humaneness of the cull was due to be published by DEFRA at the end of last month. The post-mortem results from these badges, allegedly shot as part of that cull, have been passed to the independent review panel. Tom Clark, Channel 4 News in Somerset. Well, we're joined now by Professor Rosie Woodruff from the Institute of Zoology and a former member of the independent scientific group which advised the previous government on options for controlling bovine TB and by the former farmer, now Conservative MP and member of the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Select Committee, Neil Parrish. Uh, Professor Woodroff, 
It's a kind of I told you so from you because on the Krebs Commission this is roughly what you thought would happen. Indeed, we, we warned that, uh, that there was a serious risk that, uh, that these pilot culls uh, would potentially make TB in cattle worse rather than better and would become a costly distraction for what is a very serious problem. This is a massive problem for farmers. It deserves an effective solution. But what these pilot culls seem to be showing is that, that this culling is not it, is not that solution. You had a farm, you had badgers, and you had dairy cattle, and they had TB. I mean, and now you're an MP. Uh, but looking back and looking forward, where do we go from here? Well, I think, you know, we only have to look at the Republic of Ireland, where they've actually culled badgers over the last 10 years, and that's reduced the disease in cattle dramatically. So I think we need to wait for this full report to come out. The Secretary of State haven't yet seen it, and work out exactly what's happened, because I think in all... all but the all the signs are they yes, haven't gone terribly all, well. All the arguments, I think, now really much are very much about the humaneness of the cull, and I think it may be that perhaps in the future we'll need to trap more badgers, mm. uh, and then cull them rather than, than control well, well, shooting. But I think the idea, yeah. the idea that we, we mustn't tackle the, the pool of disease in the badger, which is then gives it to the cattle, because we're cleaning our cattle herds, but we're now letting them back into the fields with infected badgers. Right. We do need to tackle both. But, but uh, all this assumes that there really is this correlation uh, between badgers, TB and cattle. Mm -hmm. um, you're certain there is? Yes, I think, I think nobody... Uh, questions really, nobody seriously questions the link between TB and badgers and cattle. Um, and I think nobody questions the need to tackle the problem in badgers. I think that the concern is that culling... But if you don't shoot them, how do you do it? Absolutely. With so the problem with, 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 with shooting badgers is that because of a quirk of badger behaviour, if you don't shoot enough badgers and if you don't do it over a short enough time period, um, the ch behaviour of the badger changes such that you actually increase TB risk to cattle rather than reducing them. Now by contrast, vaccination of badgers is, is here, it's available. Uh, we know that it's, uh, it reduces transmission from badger to badger very effectively. And so there's every reason for optimism that it can also reduce transmission to cattle. What we need is pilots of that, pilots of vaccination. And there are, are you piloting it? Piloting we are, of your we are institute? piloting a uh, vaccination of badgers in West Cork. Right. So would, would you be tempted to have a look at this? I, I think vaccination plays an important role, but what it doesn't do is incur the infected badger. So that's why I think culling and in vaccination all have part of the armory because what we can't do is see 20, 25,000 cattle a year taken for, for TB oh, oh, okay. and all the, all the problems that farmers have. I think, you know, sometimes we're well, very, I'm very keen on the badger the welfare, professor. but there is the farmer welfare and the cattle welfare. What do you do too. with the infected badger? Well, absolutely. And I think it's true vaccination doesn't... Uh, doesn't stop badgers, infected badgers from being infected, but I'm glad that my doctor doesn't take the approach that vaccination is therefore pointless. I vaccinate, get my children vaccinated against, against diseases. It doesn't remove, you know, the children who've got measles. Yeah, yeah, but, um, but let me just yeah, finish. Sorry. It's, um, what it does is it prevents those, those badgers from passing TB on to other badgers. And therefore, over a few years, um, the, the affected ones die off and you are left with, yeah. with, a, with an immune population. But, and, and culling yeah. likewise yeah. takes years to have but any we, benefit But we're targeting the hot spots of TB. That's where we're targeting the badger population. If we could, we could cull those badgers, then we can actually vaccinate around these areas. Vaccinating in the future will take you know, president, mm. but at the moment we have got to get rid of TB. And I, I remind you, Republic yeah. of Ireland, they have halved the disease in 10 years. Well, look, uh, we'll get you back when the minister makes his decision. It's a very interesting situation. Thank you very much, both of you, Thank for coming you. in.